as I pondered what clout to chase next, I streamed a lot. And during these streams, I get asked a question quite a bit, and that is, what are my favorite fallouts? How would I rank the fallouts? Well, today, we're going to find that answer out in this video. Now, this list may be controversial. People might get upset. That's all right. This is all about opinions, but I am going to take personal bias out of it instead of using nostalgia and things like that. And I'm going to do it in canonical order, in chronological order, rather. So I'll be starting with Fallout 1 and moving forward. So with the first Fallout, I'm going to put it on a B. And the reason I'm going to put it there is this. If we're taking nostalgia bias out of it, Fallout, the original Fallout, classic Fallout, does start to feel dated. The gameplay improvements made by 2 are noticeably absent nowadays, and that's kind of what I'm going off of, is how I feel now, not how I felt back then, because we're taking nostalgia and trying to be unbiased about things, taking bias out of it. It feels dated. And though graphics don't make the game, it looks dated as well. The clunkiness from 1998 turn-based RPG systems is very apparent in the classic fallouts, which is why this uh, fallout, number one here, is getting such a mid-rank for me. It may be one of the first ones I played, it may have made me fall in love with the series, but if I take that out of it and I look at it unbiasedly, it's about mid-tier for me at this point. I will say that classic fallout has one of the best, if not the best, main quest storylines of all of the fallout games. I really enjoy coming out of Vault 13, learning about the super mutant threat, trying to save your vault, and eventually, at the end, the only ending you can get is being exiled. And I really appreciate that bleak post-war atmosphere that it paints, but the clunkiness and knowing what gets added in Fallout 2 and where the series goes from here, again, mid-tier for me. So that leads us, of course, to Fallout 2. One of my favorite Fallout experiences. But if we take nostalgia out and we try to be unbiased, I think I would fairly place Fallout 2 at an A tier. And here's my reasoning behind that. Though Fallout 2 shares the dated feeling that classic Fallout share, uh, has as well, it adds to the formula in a way that makes Fallout 2 more replayable for me than the original Fallout. Fallout 2's story also I enjoy quite a bit. I think that the fact that it gets more open world aspects added to it, the fact that you have a little bit more freedom of choice within this world, and after you find the Gek, the time limit seemingly goes away, or at least increases to a just an, a crazy, crazy bit. So you're able to roam around and do things as you please. I think the character building from the first Fallout going into Fallout 2 not only as the player character and the stats and things like that, but actual characters in the game. I just prefer the experience more than classic Fallout. I think that the gameplay aspects that they added, like the take all button, things like that, they added that really made this more enjoyable for me than classic Fallout. Now, if I'm using nostalgia, this would be an S rank. But I am taking nostalgia out of it, and unbiasedly, I still think even being built or made rather back in 1998 fallout 2 is still one of the best games on the planet and i think it it's worthy of an a tier ranking especially in the fallout series because we have to remember that's still pretty pretty high anyway that's my two cents on it next in the series we'll be looking at fallout tactics i don't necessarily think that fallout tactics is a bad game but i also don't think that it really represented fallout when it came out and some people would say 3 and 4 don't as well, but I'm going to put Tactics at a C. Here's why. Though most Fallout fans seem to complain about Tactics moving away from Fallout gameplay-wise, I am not even like, yeah, that's a good point, and other Fallout games that will share this tier later will talk about as well being kind of similar to this in that aspect, 
but I'm mainly putting Tactics here because of how forgettable it was on the campaign side of things. I used to play this at Wizards of the Coast all the time with my friends, and those are some of my best memories, when we would land it up and have battles. But when it comes to actual single player campaign, I think it's lacking a lot. It's forgettable, and most people, even incredibly big fans of Fallout, end up skipping this game. So though the gameplay might be fun, and you might have a good time moving your squad around, I think that the solo aspect of a Fallout game, when it comes to like classic Fallout or Fallout 2, it, it, it's more preferred to me than this. So if I'm going on my own list, Tactics is going to be at a C. Next up on the list, we're going to be looking at Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, one of the first console Fallout games. And oh boy, am I putting it at a D. Here's why. I think this game is abysmal. Some would say, well, at least the gameplay is good, but I would argue just play Baldur's Gate. This game is not only a bad Fallout game, but it's disrespectful to the franchise that it's representing. To remove Nuka-Cola, the iconic drink of Fallout, and replace it with Ball's energy drink, you're out of your fucking mind, you're disrespectful, and I absolutely loathe the fact that this game exists. Absolutely loathe it. Some people have had fun playing it. I did not have fun playing it. I just felt disrespected the entire time as a fan of Fallout. Shame on the developers for this game. And if people want to talk about Bethesda ruining the IP, this shit. Whew, we're lucky to have come back from it. Okay, now we're getting into the Bethesda games. The real juicy bits. Up next, we're going to be looking at Fallout 3. And it may surprise some of you to know that I kind of place this higher on the tier list than others might. With Fallout 3, I'm going to put it at an A rank right next to Fallout 2. And here's why. Fallout 3 it was literally a game changer. And everybody quite enjoyed it when it came out. Now since we've done the same thing with Fallout 2 and 1, things like that, and taken nostalgia out of it, I don't think this has aged as badly as Fallout 1 and 2. The story left a lot to be desired in my opinion. Though I do think it was decent. It was decently voice acted. Of course Liam Neeson knocked it out of the park. But when it came to the main quest, I felt like there could have there could have been something else going on. There really could have. And a lot of people agree that the find your dad, find your son thing, it just didn't it didn't connect with a whole lot of people. Though I enjoyed it my first time through. So if everybody's playthroughs were like mine, yes. odds are you enjoyed it when you went through. The first time at least. And I still replay this to this day. I enjoy it quite a bit. I think the jump to first person in Fallout 3 makes this stand out as an A rank game because though the reason it's not getting S rank is because of what I think it's lacking in the story, I think the jump to first person was good for Fallout. Some classic fans don't believe that. I think that Bethesda's moving it to a first person RPG if you can call it that anymore. But it that move really revolutionized Fallout in a good way. So it goes to the A rank for me. Lacking in the story, I think the mechanics got way better with this entry. And though some people might say that the gunplay was kind of shoddy and it was kind of just like oblivion with guns, I still think that this was revolutionary for the series and I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. And moving forward, of course, we land on New Vegas. Oh, beautiful New Vegas. You're like a light shining in the darkness. <laughs> See what I did there? So, I imagine... Where would New Vegas go? I don't know, probably S-Rank. Let's talk about why. New Vegas is the best Fallout experience that you can get. I think Fallout New Vegas took what Bethesda built in Fallout 3 to revolutionize the series and nearly perfected it. Not only did it take the series back to its roots in California and Nevada, but it also told a beautiful story of the punished courier getting wronged in his mission to deliver his platinum chip. Of course, it could be a her, depending on how you make your character. And actually, in the manual for New Vegas, it says that the courier was female. Very interesting. But as it tells the story, you really decide the type of person that you're going to be. The choices are more relevant in New Vegas than they were in Fallout 3. 
the faction system, picking NCR or the Legion or maybe somebody different. Maybe you're siding with House. Being able to decide what is right for you and in turn shape the wasteland is so good and so awesome. Now we didn't bring up the DLCs with Fallout 3. They are very good. And I don't want to really count the DLCs for New Vegas either. I'm just talking about the games here. But both of the both all the DLCs for the Fallout games, some are decent, but they were very good in New Vegas and pretty good in Fallout 3 as well. I just think that New Vegas really shows what you can do in Fallout. It really shows the Fallout vibe and it really it's just beautiful to me. I really think this is the best Fallout game to have ever come out. Only a couple remain now. We're getting into the nitty gritty of things. Old Fallout 4. Boy, Fallout 4 was I hyped for you. I was so hyped for you, Fallout 4. <laughs> the only thing I could possibly be more hyped for was 76. But I think I'm going to put Fallout 4 at the B tier. And I'll tell you why. Fallout 4 was a major disappointment to me on launch. In fact, you can go back and see that I made a Fallout 4 rant talking just how disappointed I was with Fallout 4. But I am trying to keep personal bias out of it. This game did introduce some good things into Fallout. The sprinting function, the grenade thing, the gun plays better. Which is why it's higher up on the list, because I think the fucking main story was absolute dog shit. I think the faction system was fucking broken from the start. I think that they abused and totally misused the factions of Fallout for fan service, and the whole game is kind of a mess. But again, when the DLCs come, it's a little better, but of course, more than half of them are just dedicated to the settlement building, and then you have Creation Club in there as well, which I gave a fair shake by, you know, checking out the majority of it. The one thing that I do like about Fallout 4 is the ability to add mods on consoles, things like that, but again, you can't forgive the story with Fallout 4. I gave no shits about my son, I had no time to connect with him, and by the time I met him I was already done hearing about it. Though I do normally side with the Institute because I think it makes sense, and maybe a lot of people are against me on that, it doesn't matter. I just think that the game could have been so much fucking more, and yeah, it's a good game. It is fun to play through, and to this day I still play it. But as a Fallout game, I do get disappointed by things in it. Oh boy, do I get disappointed by things in it. I think you heard what I said, so that's why it's at the rank that it's at. And here we are. Good old 76. Fucking Fallout 76. Oh, a lot of people might think I'd just throw this in the D, but I'm not going to. This is going to get a C, just like Tactics. Why is it getting a C like Tactics? Because like Tactics, it changed the gameplay of Fallout, moved the series in a different direction. Why isn't it getting a D? Because at least it didn't change Nuka-Cola to fucking balls energy drink. Now it's time to thank my wonderful supporters. These are people that pledge $5 or more on Patreon or become a YouTube member. And they are Fireflare, Jake Russell, Lisbeth, Nathaniel, Skylar Masterson, Sorry Boy, Squiggles420, and SS1234L. And on the YouTube member side of things, we have James Medor, Clay395, Corbin King, Kyle S, This Old Planeswalker, TKS Gimper, Fireflare, and Matt Jordan. Thank you guys very much. You helped me do all of this, and it's super appreciated. It's very generous of you. Uh, I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky. You gon' trust the sky, baby girl. Testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky.